Iceland is a country famous for its unique landscapes. Towering mountains and glaciers, striking waterfalls and black sand beaches, it all brings to mind an obvious question. Could you put that in a video game? I'm not just talking about trees and rocks, but entire landscapes. Could a small studio like ours really pull something like that off? Well, yeah. Otherwise, we wouldn't have made this video. So come along with us as we scan this mountain, Kirkjufell, from top to bottom, create a digital 3D asset out of it, and put it into Unreal Engine to use in our game. This is Mirkur Games. We're a small game development studio in Reykjavik, Iceland, and we're still working on our first ever video game, Echoes of the End. My name is Dadi, and I'm going to show you how we're taking advantage of the natural beauty all around us to bring the world of Ima to life. So then you might wonder, what is photogrammetry? Well... So photogrammetry is scanning a real life object with photography. Basically, you have a camera and you walk around whichever object you've selected, a tree, a rock, doesn't matter, and you take pictures, 360, all around the object, preferably, from all angles. And you feed that data into a photogrammetry software, and it's gonna identify points on the object in all the photographs, and it's gonna align them in 3D space. It's called a point cloud, when all those points come together and form the object that you've scanned. From there, we can generate a polygonal mesh that we can, uh, after optimizing a little bit, import into the 3D engine and uh, use in our game. So why is photogrammetry so incredibly useful to us? Well, we're a small team. There's just 40 of us, and only a handful of us are making assets. Photogrammetry allows us to make good-looking assets very quickly. You need to be aware of the weather. So the best weather to scan in is when it's cloudy. That's also unpredictable weather, because it, if it's cloudy, it might rain, which is a huge problem, because it can't be wet. It's going to be specularity, and you don't want any highlights in your scan. For one thing, it's going to confuse the photogrammetry software, it's gonna make it harder to pinpoint the points, uh, but also you don't want any highlights or shadows in the texture. You want that to be diffuse, meaning it's best to scan on a cloudy day when there aren't shadows, nothing is wet. It's just dry and boring looking, really. We want the lighting information to be generated in the uh, Unreal Engine. And if we have a scene where uh, the environment is wet, we want to add that ourselves. You don't want that in the base scan. And those assets are unique to us because we scanned them. We scanned our own nature and put it into the game. You can't get that any other way. We literally had to make it ourselves, and they look really good. They help us bridge the uncanny valley as much as we can by taking something that existed in real life and putting it into the game. But a mountain isn't a tree. You can walk around a tree and just take a bunch of photos. How do you do that to a mountain? It's huge! Surely it's not the same process, but it is. It's of course a massive thing to scan, so we needed to use a drone. We have to take pictures from all the way at the top and then work our way down. It takes a while. We wanted to get a scan of an iconic Icelandic mountain called Kirkjöfell. If you ever search for any pictures from Iceland, you will definitely have seen this mountain, as seen in Game of Thrones as well. It's around a two and a half hour drive from here, so it was quite a trip, but totally worth it. Okay, so we are now on our second day of scanning Kirkjöfell. Uh, back after having the drone failure, we managed to sort it, it was a combination of the USB cable not working and the memory card being faulty. Today the weather is looking actually decent. We only have clouds for a limited time of the day, so we rushed back out this morning to try and get the second side of Kirkjövet scanned. So let's hope this one works. That can't be good. That cloud's hanging real low. You need to be aware of the weather. Okay, so we're back at Kirkjövet. The only bit of trouble that we have is that there is a bit of low-hanging clouds. So we're going to see by flying the drones all the way up there if they're actually interfering or if they're far enough away for the mountain for us to capture it. Otherwise, if it's not working, we'll just have to hang around for a couple of hours and wait a moment to shine. But for now, we're going to go get set up and see if we can get the show on the road. Unfortunately, they're quite foggy. It didn't seem to want to go away properly. And the trick to that is to simply wait until the fog goes away or try to come back. So we just wrapped photo scanning Kirkjufet. Took us two days, two drones, a lot of waiting for the weather to clear up, but we've done it. So from here on out, we're gonna head back to town and then hopefully next week, we'll be able to process those scans and see how they turn out in the Unreal Engine. We scan our assets at the distance they're meant to be viewed from. Since this mountain is meant to be viewed in its entirety, 
in the background or far away, that's the distance we took the pictures at. For details, we'd have to go take pictures a whole lot more up close and build out smaller assets so that we can layer out details from the bottom to the top. Building out more and more detailed assets the further down the mountain you go, or rather that the details become lighter the higher up the mountain you look. I remember when I was in London, my friend Mike Bodie, who was also one of the voice actors on the game, was pointing out to me how the London architecture all had this thing called string coursing. The buildings had more details and heavier architecture pieces at the bottom, and that as you looked up the buildings, the details were faded, lighter, a softer touch. The same applies to assets in 3D. As you go closer to its roots, you need to build out more and more details with more and more assets at smaller and tighter photo scans to build out the details the further down the mountain you go. Scanning a glacier is much the same. Photographing the landmark is just the first step. For a quick breakdown, let's go over to one of our 3D artists. Kata? I'm <laughs> so <laughs> John? Better. Right. After taking the pictures, you have a bunch of pictures. You want to take these pictures, oh. remove some of the lighting data, because lighting is always... It's gonna do what it's gonna do. You're out in nature, things happen, you want to get your highlights down, your shadows up, make things as even and simple for the project to work from as possible. Then you take these pictures, import them into... We use both reality capture, meta shape, depending on whether we're working on huge, huge things, or small huge things. These pictures get then aligned from similar dots within these photos. The program takes it, sees, oh, this dot here is also on this photo here, which means the camera's rotated this way, creating this 3D shape. When that's done, you get this beautiful point cloud. You do a little cleanup and then you take it to the next stage, which creates more of a dense cloud. Here you can see your textures, you start getting the idea of if this worked or if you have to go back to Kirkjufell to do another six hour scanning session. It happens. Then you build it into a mesh and from there you build your textures. Now it's up to export all of these millions of points into a software that can handle said millions of points. Here you do your first set of cleanup. You can either use Blender or ZBrush or whatever floats your goat. We also have to build our UV maps for our textures to make sense. Sometimes it's less of a sense from the first program, so we do have to do some UV cleanups every now and then. It's just part of the job. It's not all fancy technology and magic. Then we're pretty much down to the final point of getting said huge mesh into something that can be usable within a game engine. Here we have to make it from the millions of polys either into a nanite mesh, which has been magic for us. We love the nanites. Or if you're doing characters, we wrap it to use the same topology for all of our humanish, which helps us with animations a lot. It's a really nice tool. We've been using Wrap 3D, I think it's called now. Yeah, I think so. It's also a plugin for ZBrush. It's one of the good ones from there. We get them in Engine, where we have to not just have our textures because of flat photo is a flat photo and it's not very realistic We're in different lighting scenarios so we have to put up our shaders we have to build our collisions we have to make sure there are no huge holes where there are not supposed to be huge holes that's what she said Thanks so much for watching this video. We'd really appreciate it if you left a like and a comment. If you think this game looks cool, you could add it to your Steam wishlist by clicking the first link in the description below. If you haven't seen our trailer, click on this video here. If you want to see a quick introduction to the studio, click on the video here. If you've seen both and you want to see more, then subscribe and hit the bell to be notified when we release new videos. Thanks again. We'll see you in EMA.